Hello and welcome to the first ever Kitchen Sink with G. I'm Georgie and in this first episode I kind of want to give an overview of what is Kitchen Sink, what is this platform going to be, what's going to be on this and what are we going to be talking about, who am I, how am I credible or how do I know what I know to talk about what we're going to talk about. This is a brand new channel and a brand new platform and a brand new thing so I want to introduce what's going to be, what's, what is Kitchen Sink. So to get started I want to say that this platform is for everyone. It's going to be full of all things female menstrual cycle, but we're going to chat and hopefully understand things a bit better, which I think could help everyone. Predominantly women, sure, but if you're a guy, this helps you because chances are you know a woman, you'll interact with a woman at some point in your life. Knowing them and how they flow and a little bit of the science behind it is going to generally improve your entire relationship with women. And obviously, if you're a girl, this knowledge helps you live in sync with the natural fluctuations of hormones that happen throughout a 28-ish day cycle if you are naturally cycling on no birth control and you have a regular natural 28 day cycle so this is the stuff that yes you probably should have been taught at school or it's the stuff you absorb or learn through other sources this can now be your source but most of it wasn't ever really taught ever unless like your parents got into it when had the awkward conversation when you're 13 about puberty and stuff but there's so much more to it than just that I guess or just bleeding once a month and guys and girls will both know this <laughs> that there is much more to it than just bleeding once a month there's definitely been a large boom in menstrual talk there's no doubt about that especially in the last I'd say five years it seems like everyone's talking about female health and menstrual health and wants to jump on that so yes I'm jumping on that train but I've had my own personal experience firstly with not having the education or just not knowing I lost my cycle very young and I didn't know that it was like how essential and how necessary it was I managed to get it back for myself by living intuitively and totally geeking out and nerding and researching I'll get into everything a bit later in this video but now I know so much about it all and the science behind it that yeah that's kind of what this platform is going to be and in a way, it's kind of great that there is this rise in menstrual talk and uh, female health talk because you'll be surprised to know most science, a lot of the facts that we know, yeah, most things were initially discovered and tested and likely still are only tested on men. And the reason behind this, I discovered in my second year of university when we were we were doing a practical experiment in the lab for sports science. and. I wasn't participating in the study because it's too difficult to study women. And that's, I guess, been the theme for science for so long. And that's because of the 28 day menstrual cycle. To be honest, it's, it's understandable because it's way, way, way easier to get a large group of men who you just chuck them all in the experiment. If you're doing that on women, you have to make sure that every single participant firstly has a 28 day cycle. Then you have to match them all up so that they're doing each part or they're doing the experiment in each phase. So if you make one girl run, like they, they, it's a running and you're testing whether beetroot powder works to enhance running performance. Each woman has to run the first one on her period or on her ovulatory phase because the hormones that are present in each phase will affect the results. So they figured this out like women are performing differently over a four week basis, men perform the same over a four week basis, bar the intervention that you give them, so the beetroot powder or whatever. So much easier to make studies on men. So most things that we know are tested only on men, which cool, but as we know, one size doesn't fit all, men are slightly bigger, they've got a bigger heart, they metabolise things differently. There's a lot of physiological differences between men and women. So it's just interesting really, and that sparked my little brain in second year university, like how much else do we know as fact, but it's actually only based on men and it's only true for men. So before uni, I began working under a naturopath. She was, I guess, my introduction to looking at each each ingredient with its own nutritional properties. 
I started working for her when I was modeling in London in my gap year. Um, I basically just needed a job to keep me sane because the modeling's so up and down. And I was going to yoga in Soho and I went into her cafe quite a few times. And yeah, 10 years of working together, we did retreats. I helped her cook for her naturopathic meal prep clients. I helped her with her book. Anyways, she introduced me to not just looking at what you eat, but how you eat it, what you eat it with, how you cook it. Each ingredient has a different nutritional property. I've grown up with home cooking, but meat and veg and whatever's in the fridge. Um, and Kim taught me that each vegetable has different nutritional properties. Each meat has a different nutritional property. And the way that you cook it influences its nutritional property. And essentially, if you're healing someone with food, which is what naturopathy is, which is what I was learning from her, is that if you're healing a specific thing or a nutritional deficiency, you can up the foods that have that nutrition. So that was kind of my first introduction into like food as healing. Um, and I watched MasterChef and loved the kind of chef side of things too, different ways to cook foods, to prepare foods, different foods together. And then I've got this nutritional, like or this naturopathic influence going in there like, oh hello something that's cooked like that has the nutritional properties of that so that's my like the way that my brain works when it comes to food and creating recipes and developing recipes so yeah i was working with her whilst whilst i was modeling in my gap year which was a very unconventional gap year i was scouted in my last year of school to model which was great actually because i needed a bit of a confidence boost and school was not great home was not great everything was just not great at that time so modeling gave me like a little little spark I guess or something that I could do for myself. Anyway I did this international competition called Elite Model Look. I was scouted by Elite Agency and they asked me to do their to get essentially equivalent of England's next top model. So I did that, <laughs> didn't win it but the headline sponsor of the event was Colgate. I won the runner-up so I was the face of Colgate for that year. <laughs> Might put a picture here, might not. But yeah, then after that competition, I then worked with Elite as a full-time model for most of my gap year. I got to Fashion Week, did Fashion Week, and was like, uh-uh, <laughs> I wanna go traveling. Uh, I don't wanna be in London for my whole gap year. So anyway, when traveling, that was when I first came to Bali, actually. I did an activist escapes fitness treat, which I loved. And then I did a bit of, went over to some of the islands and fell in love with Bali, um, which it meant I kept coming back every year after then. And that was my gap year. As I kind of touched on that, I studied science at university. I was at Exeter and did human biosciences, which I guess was a hybrid course between biology and sports science, which is probably the most perfect course that I could have done. I'm a bit of a science nerd and I have like this questioning brain that needs to know answers. So that was like my biology side. And then I've always been sporty and um, fascinated basically with the human body, even if it is how it moves. So biokinetics and sports nutrition and everything. So I had then the sporty side. So yeah, it was the most perfect course for me. Most of the other people in my course went to work in research, which, yeah, as you can imagine, a little South African bum that goes to Bali surfing did not end up in the lab. I was asked to work for a health cafe just off of Oxford Street by Selfridges. Um, that was like gut health, gut friendly, off the back of like working with Kim and my health and foodie experience. I started off as front of house, making smoothies, coffee, serving salads and then after speaking to customers and actually knowing you know what was wanted what was needed what was loved and with my like foodie whatever background I then moved into product development so I helped them develop some new recipes and um, improve some of the recipes they already had and also adapt some to like make that a keto version or make that a gluten-free whatever whilst i was working at that cafe i did a nutritional i did the nutritional chef course at leith school of food and wine so i do have some sort of chefing qualification and when the cafe decided to open a second location on the king's road i was asked to lead and project manage that and that's essentially what burnt me out and brought me to bali opening a cafe it was a lot. To be fair, it was probably, I could do it, but I had a little like thing in my head that, I mean, I'd grown up in South Africa and I already knew that England just wasn't cutting it for me. And I've been coming to Bali every year. 
um, or just, you know, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to travel. I was 23 um, and I just, something in me was like, mm -mm, like not yet at least, you know, live a bit first, travel, live somewhere else in the world. So I, yeah, booked my one way to Bali and that was the start of my Bali chapter. Bali for me was everything I needed to de-stress and just, I guess, sit with everything that had happened. I didn't mention, I didn't really go into it, but I touched on it. My parents' divorce when we left South Africa and moved back to the UK was an incredibly like turbulent time. And it's, but essentially it left me in a situation where I had to do, I had a lot of self work to do to get me back to a place where I guess it's like normal. Um, and Bali, was that for me like we had three four years of therapy when we first moved back to the uk cbt mostly and all of that kind of came back when i came to bali and i had the space and the time and the perspective to digest to look back on you know everything that had happened and with just more of an observational mind and actually like get through it in my brain so bali for me was the space and the time that i needed to to work on myself really one of these setbacks during that traumatic time was the loss of my period. In Bali, in about my second year after I'd like decompressed after London and everything, I properly started to address and tackle the menstrual period hormonal thing that had just been kind of just not, not thought about even. Before then, if I'm very honest, I didn't actually know that it's Firstly, not normal. Secondly, not healthy and not good to not have a regular cycle um, because this stuff just isn't really talked about and known until like the whole boom, whatever it was, three, five years ago. So that's, I guess, why, why I'm so passionate as well about bringing this information and helping people just understand a bit more about their cycle and what, you know, it's, that it's really important and healthy to have a normal cycle. And I was modeling at the time here in Bali, which was great, but also meant that I had a lot of spare time on my hands. So I went down a total rabbit hole of self-discovery. I was journaling so much. I created these own little self journal books, which my, I would love for them to become an actual printed product because they, they helped me so much. So stay tuned and that might be a thing, hopefully future. Yeah, I was journaling, speaking to loads of people, doing a lot of acupuncture really helped me. A lot of it was also mind because as I mentioned before, I would get so stressed and anxious that I wasn't doing enough or I needed to be doing something and like constantly having pressure and stress on me, which was just not. So I, I did a lot, I had a lot of like, I had to overcome a lot and have a lot of mental realizations basically to help me just relax and regulate my nervous system also to be able to have a regular cycle. But anyway, I researched, I did so much research, you know, reading science papers and stuff, which I can, which I have done, um, blogs, articles, books. I've got this stack of books on women's hormones and women's health, podcasts, so many podcasts. Um, I don't know what else there is really, but basically I covered everything and learn pretty much everything there is to know about the menstrual cycle and through a lot of self experimentation and me search so applying research to me and seeing how i react or like how it actually feels and what works best for me i started to sync my life with how my cycle should be and eventually initiated the start of my own cycle again so i guess that's my credibility to talk about this topic from going from like zero baseline no hormones nothing to having a regular cycle again so basically on this platform i want to bring you <laughs> I want to bring you digestible science inside a science paper and out. <laughs> oh my god, I love this man. So in this channel, I want to bring you digestible science because inside science papers, it's so difficult to decipher what you actually need to know and what you don't between all the plus minus and all the graphs and stuff. So I will be reading the science papers. I will be reading the articles. I know what I already know. 
and packaging up scientific information into a digestible format so that you can essentially optimize your life. That is the aim of this channel because as a woman, you got four phases, each one of them is different and you can optimize how you work, eat, sleep even, and train in each phase. So when you're gonna hit your PBs, what to eat in certain phases so that you can support the next phase, the next cycle, all of that information. That's what this channel is gonna be. Ton of information to help you optimize your cycle and essentially optimize your life. And if you're a man, help your girl out. You know where she's at in her cycle, just help her out. You know, all of this information is so valuable for men and women. So I'm really excited to share everything. I've got so much lined up, which I'm just excited to just get into in these next few videos. And yeah, I'm just excited. So make sure you like this video, comment. I'd love to hear your comments, what you'd like to hear from me other than what I've already mentioned before, which is 100% going on this channel, but I'd love to hear anything else that you want me to cover, um, any suggestions, any recommendations, anything you, anything you wanna say. Um, and obviously subscribe so you don't miss out on anything that's coming and an opportunity to optimize your life like, <laughs> Um, and hope to see you in the next video.